All right, A to Z RC viewers, uh, you are joining me in my home tonight, uh, which means we are not going to be driving any cars. Uh, instead, we're just going to talk a little bit about them. So what you see behind me is my entire fleet on a new shelf that I just set up to display them. And I'm going to be covering everything you see here, but not in this video. I don't want this to be way too long. So instead, we are just going to be talking about the two trucks which got me back into the hobby, the Traxxas Slashes. All right, so here are my two machines. Um, uh, Zach and Alex, uh, when they were covering their builds, I uh, probably noticed how different the two were uh, between the Backslash and the Slash Ultimate. Um, my two builds, um, I also had um, a strong intention with them. I just took a very different approach. And um, in a way, I tried to create my own Ultimates. I, I was not totally sold on the way Traxxas had designed their 4x4 Ultimate. I felt like uh, it wouldn't have quite met my needs. So when I built my 4x4, I, I tried to make my own version of that. Now, the 4x4 Slash, uh, this one here, is the, the first vehicle I purchased that um, yeah essentially got me back into the hobby. I, I had a Bandit VXL when I was a lot younger and also a uh, 116th Rally VXL, but I never owned a Slash. Um, in a previous video, you saw that my dad had a Slash from around that time period, uh, but I never had one myself. So when I found out that these guys all had theirs, I was all too happy to pick one up for myself. The way this truck started out was a VXL, and that was because I wanted to throw a lot of parts at it to kind of bring it up to the ultimate status, uh, just in a slightly different direction. So one of the things that I was trying to do with this was only using Traxxas parts. Uh, something really cool about the Slash is that there's just tons of upgrade options, uh, a lot of different aftermarket options. Um, but I decided that, you know, Trax has had enough to offer. And I, you know, I wanted my own ultimate. I wanted it to be like, feel like factory in a way. So I, I exclusively used Traxxas parts on this truck. Um, really quick, I just wanted to address uh, what's going on with this body. Uh, this is the original body. I've only had the truck since late September, and this body's just already trashed. So very recently, I cut the uh, the quarter panels off and tried to, you know, kind of make my own custom little chopped body. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Um, might end up modifying it a little bit more, but I actually already got a brand new <laughs> body from Traxxas. So I'll be running this uh, shortly. And uh, if you didn't already know, uh, bodies are on sale. Bodies and tires are on sale on tracks. So I think it's like 20% off. So if you're in need of one like myself, uh, make sure to grab one now when you can. But let's pop this body off here so we can get into it. So like I said, uh, this truck started as a 4x4 VXL, and one of the things that I wanted to retain was the high center of gravity chassis. Uh, that might come across as odd to some people, but I like the additional ground clearance that this offers, and I really don't feel like the handling uh, suffers too much from it. Um, the two wheel drive is a different story, but on the four x four, the, the high CG chassis is actually pretty valid. Um, beyond that, I kept all of the original uh, electronics, um, you know, kind of the same as what would be on the ultimate. So the, you know, the VXL motor and ESC, I'm still running the stock servo and, and transmitter and all that. Um, 
But one of the, the very first things I added was the, uh, the light kit. I actually put it on while my very first battery pack was charging. I just, I totally wanted this light kit. So I, I picked it up the same day as I got the car and, and threw it right on. Uh, most of us have the light kit now, but I was the first. <laughs> um, the, the next major thing I did to this, uh, which you've probably already noticed here is all this orange. I put on the extreme heavy duty kit. Uh, I bought this truck right after the uh, BL2S model came out and I was so close to getting that just purely because I wanted the, the clipless body and the extreme heavy duty kit. Uh, that was one thing I didn't mention. Uh, when I bought this VXL, uh, Traxxas had not yet updated all the slashes to clipless. So mine came with the cotter pins and I upgraded to clipless later. But yeah, so kinda on the, to the point of making my own Ultimate, I didn't wanna go with the aluminum that comes on the Ultimate. I know some people still bend that and I just, I wanted to keep this thing as lightweight and as strong as possible. So the extreme heavy duty kit offered what I wanted and I could get it in orange too. That's the other thing is the ultimate, you only got blue and I'm a big fan of the color orange. It's kind of a theme for all my truck builds. And I love this fluorescent orange kit on the extreme heavy duty. It just really pops in the knuckles. Like when the car's driving and you steer, you just see that pop of color and I think it looks great. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of this kit. Um, I have not had any durability problems. The axles are holding up beautifully. Um, no issues with the knuckles, anything like that. The um, arms were also upgraded. Uh, this was before it came with the heavy duty arms out of the box. So I threw on the, the heavy duty arms just in black. I wanted to keep the orange as an accent color and not overwhelm it although you could get them in orange. Um, the next major upgrade were the GTR shocks. And again, like the, the ultimate only comes with them in blue. I preferred the black. So that's what I went with on this one. Um, just running the standard uh, black springs on it, which is what comes on the ultimate with the 30 weight shock oil. Uh, so I kept that standard. Uh, the wheel and tire package, I did swap out here. Just put these on because my originals are pretty trashed. The foams are disintegrated. The original wheels uh, were this design here. So it's that split spoke design. Uh, I kept the same color scheme, but I went to the fat spokes. I feel like the kind of chunkier wheel design looks really good with the, the very uh, simplistic two-tone body. Um, what else? Uh, yes, the ESC fan and motor heat sink and fan are just the, the standard Traxxas parts. So if you weren't aware, the Traxxas Haas uh, heat sink and fan works on the slash. You just need to modify the fan shroud a little bit. Uh, Traxxas actually has an article on their website of how to do that. So if you're struggling with overheating problems and um, wanna make that upgrade, I, I highly recommend it. It was easy to do, uh, just plug and play, aside from that little bit of trimming, but nothing crazy. Um, you know, I think that really kind of covers it. It is a, a pretty simple build for me. I, I threw all of the parts at it very quickly. I was really concerned with breaking the truck. Um, at the time, it was the only one I had. So it was important to me to, um, you know, get it as durable as possible, as quick as possible. So I, I never even ended up breaking any of the stock stuff. I just upgraded it all right away. I pretty much had a game plan from the moment I bought it because I was trying to decide between the VXL, the BL2S and the Ultimate. So I already had all my parts picked out and, and purchased and installed it all very quickly. Um, 
since then, it's been, you know, almost six months later. Um, truck's still running like a champ. Uh, it's a, a little bit grittier uh, than when it started, um, but I've not had any real parts failures. Um, I love the way it handles and drives. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm super pleased with how it turned out. I really don't feel like I will need to upgrade anything else. It's, um, yeah, I, I think I've, you know, perfectly executed my vision for this one. Just kind of, you know, it has all the perks of the ultimate, like the, the upgraded uh, durability, the better shocks. Um, I just didn't really care about the telemetry. I didn't end up doing that, I guess is the only thing I'm really missing from the ultimate. Like I said, I'm not interested in the LCG chassis. So yeah, pretty much uh, I'm done with this one. Just been enjoying driving it. Um, definitely gets driven a little bit less uh, from when I started just because I have other, other things to drive now, but it's still one of my favorites. I think it's just the most versatile out of everything. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to keep driving it. Although the one thing I did want to mention that I forgot is the, the battery packs that I run. So in this truck, I exclusively run the 7600 2S LiPo from Traxxas. I get great runtime out of it. I love the 2S power. I really think that 3S is kind of overpowered in these trucks. I think they feel the best on 2S and yeah, it just, it works great for me. I, I get what feels like over an hour of runtime out of this battery. So a lot of the times I don't even need to bring a spare pack when I go out. Let's um, talk about the two wheel drive now. While my four by four build was um, all pretty plug and play, uh, simple, the, the two wheel drive, I took a little uh, bit of a slower approach with it. Um, ended up doing really the same thing in a way. I, I tried to make my make a two-wheel drive ultimate, essentially. With the four by four, I try to kind of make my own version of, of an ultimate. This, I just made a two-wheel drive ultimate. So um, maybe while you're looking at it here in the front, I've got the, the light kit again, but I actually uh, desoldered the white LEDs from the board and then soldered on yellow LEDs. So it picks up kind of a nice yellow tint in the reflector bowls and then has a, a nice yellow glow. That was something I did to just kind of differentiate this one from the other trucks. Like when we're all running at night and we all have white lights, it's nice to have a yellow one to stand out. And I think that yellow just really looks good with this orange body. Um, and then, yeah, the standard rear bumper. But let's uh, talk about what makes this one an ultimate here. So I ended up, first off, putting on the LCG chassis. That was really the, the first mod I did to this truck. Um, I think the, the high center of gravity chassis is just horrendous. It looks awful. It drives awful. It's just so outdated. It's fragile. It's just, it's terrible. So kind of like I did uh, my 4x4, when I bought this, I bought the LCG. I think I, I drove it for like 15 minutes on the high CG just to see if my suspicions were correct. And then I ended up throwing this on. So uh, when Traxxas sells the kit, um, it only is sold with the blue chassis, which I'm not a fan of. So I bought the, uh, the charcoal gray one to put in its place. And that is actually kind of more in line with what the 4x4 Ultimate has too. But I just think this looks a lot cleaner. Um, and for the 4x4 where I wanted to keep everything plastic, I decided I wanted to do aluminum on this one, um, partly because Traxxas doesn't offer um, a plastic heavy duty kit for the two wheel drive and also just to be a little different. I wanted to kind of differentiate the two trucks in small ways, you know. So I ended up going with the the orange aluminum Traxxas um, steering blocks and hubs. Um, in the front and the rear. I don't know if you can really see them in the rear too well. 
yeah, I got those front and rear, so that's kind of just like the uh, the 4x4 Ultimate has. And then I also did the Extreme Heavy Duty, uh, or I guess they're not Extreme Heavy Duty, just the Heavy Duty front and rear suspension arms. That was another one where like, I don't even really feel like I needed them. I just think the, the stock ones are so ugly. <laughs> so I, I had to throw these on. Um, didn't have durability problems with them, but they had to go. Um, the kind of next uh, major thing that I did was the GTR shocks. Um, I really didn't even run the ultras on the 4x4 for more than like one or two battery packs, so I didn't really suffer from those. On the two wheel drive, I was committed to making them work and I just kept bending shock shafts like crazy. I think I ended up bending a total of four of them. And at, at that point I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go for the GTRs. So what I was able to do was, you know, of course they had to be orange, right? So Traxxas sells orange bodies, but not full assembled. So I bought a set of green shocks and orange bodies, swapped them out, gave the green shocks to Alex, and now I have uh, the matching set. Uh, getting these tuned for the two-wheel drive was significantly more difficult. On the 4x4, I was able to just, you know, go off what the Ultimate has, which would be, you know, the black springs, 30-weight uh, oil, and ship it. That was fine. With the, the two-wheel drive, there's no starting point. So I, I began with just going one step softer in the front and one step harder in the rear from the black springs just because of the way the weight distribution on the car is. Um, that did not work. It was still chassis slapping in the rear and it was way too stiff in the front. I couldn't even get, like the front was just sitting at, at full droop at ride height, it was bad. So then I went to full soft in the front, full hard in the rear, and it still wasn't enough. The rear was a little bit simpler to get sorted. I ended up changing out the 30 weight oil for 60 weight. And that is what the blue springs, which is the stiffest, uh, that feels pretty good to me right now. I haven't driven it on a track yet, so we'll have to see, um, but it at least feels more properly damped because these springs are so stiff too. You need a heavier oil and there's just so much weight in the rear on top of that. The front, I'm still not 100% sure on either, but what I ended up doing was I stayed with the 30 weight. I thought about going down to 20, maybe I will, but I'll stay at the 30 for now. What I had to do for the springs, uh, because the softest springs were still too stiff, was to look at some other options. Um, the GTR shocks that Traxxas makes aren't just for the slash. They have them for like the, the X01, I think like the Fortec. Um, there's like the 16th scale version, but the, the, the standard length GTRs, uh, they of course use shorter springs than the, the GTR longs that you run in the front of the slash. So that's what I ended up getting. I got, uh, the standard GTR springs, uh, which I believe these are intended to go on the X01. They're the same, uh, diameter, so you don't need to modify the spring perches or anything. They're just a little bit shorter. Uh, not much shorter though. I was actually wishing they were shorter because I have the spring preload collars all the way up and there's still just a, maybe a little bit of preload. But this is what let me um, get my ride height sorted. I like keeping my ride height low and this is still sitting just a little too tall for me, but I'm happy with it for now, at least like the car drives well enough. I, I just need to get on a track and, and make a final decision. Um, the spring rate I ended up going with uh, for the front is yellow. Uh, you probably can't see it, but it's the, the softest springs that they have for the, the standard length GTRs. So I'm kind of at a dead end there too. I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to uh, go any softer. Um, 
past that, um, I just I added the, the ESC fan, uh, same as the 4x4. Never had overheating issues, but I figured, you know, better safe than sorry. They're pretty cheap. Um, the battery pack I run in this one is just the 5800 Ma 2S. Um, I wanted to run the smaller pack just because it's a little bit lighter. And because of this chassis is lighter and there's less rolling resistance because of the two wheel drive drivetrain, I actually get the same amount of runtime with the 5800 in this as I get in the, uh, the 7600 and the 4x4. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Uh, it also let me put a foam spacer behind the battery. So I'm pushing that weight a little more forward or at least kind of just more centered in the chassis. So yeah, that, that's, I'm happy with how that's worked out. Uh, I've, I don't think I've had any parts failure on this truck other than bending the shock shafts. Uh, I'm, I'm just running the, the standard axles on this one. I think Traxxas calls them the HD axles, but at this point they're calling everything HD. <laughs> they're not the gray ones. They're not the max style ones like uh, the 4x4 has. These are just like the standard slash axles. Um, I, I run my slipper like a little loose just to try to protect the drivetrain. I don't have it cranked all the way down and I have not had any any problems with damaging the axles uh, thus far. Um, oh, there was one thing I forgot. You know, I, I did kind of break my... Um, my goal of only using Traxxas parts because uh, the, the two wheel drive just doesn't it doesn't get any love anymore and I kind of understand why but the stock shock towers on the two wheel drive just like everything else on them are really outdated uh, they're weak poorly designed they're just not really up to the standard um, what I was getting was on my rear shock tower the tower was like leaning backwards, like under the pressure of the shocks, it was pushing the tower, angling it towards the rear of the car. And you, you could just tell by trying to move it how, how flexible it was. Uh, I didn't really notice that in the front just because of how soft the front suspension is. But what I ended up doing was I went and got the RPM uh, shock towers front and rear, not for durability, just because they're stiffer. Uh, I can confirm holding them both in hand, the RPM towers are definitely stiffer than the Traxxas towers. Um, they, they still have flexibility, but you want that. They're, they just don't feel like a, a wet noodle like the Traxxas towers do. Um, I only drove the car briefly since putting those on. I can't really say I, I've noticed like a handling improvement, but it just bothered me that the tower was tweaked and it's nice to know that it's at least uh, sitting nice and upright. Uh, I did have to modify the front tower though, um, or actually I ended up modifying the front clipless mount. Alex has the same setup and he didn't have to do that. Uh, but I felt like it, mine wasn't lining up properly. So I ended up dremeling a little bit from the clipless mount to get it to nestle into the tower properly. Um, but other than that, it, it worked fine. Um, oh, it, for those of you who aren't aware, I know Traxxas does not like advertise that the GTR shocks work on the two wheel drive slash. Um, they, they do. You just need to swap out the hollow balls in the, the lower end of the front shocks because uh, these go like inside the arm instead of in front of the arm. So from your stock ultra shocks, just pop out that hollow ball and swap it into the GTR and then you're good in the front. And then in the rear, you'll just need to add uh, a little spacer in between the shock and the arm. Um, this looks like it's maybe a uh, Probably, it's probably a two millimeter spacer. And that's because the the rear upper camber link will rub on the shock spring. The These shocks are so much larger diameter than the stock shocks that it, it'll cause rubbing if you don't kick the bottom out away from the suspension. Um, so yeah, just two easy modifications. Uh, the, sh the, the spacer is the only thing you would need to buy uh, the hollow balls you already have in the stock shocks. But other than that, they bolt right up. 
Uh, and it's definitely a, a huge improvement. It, the, the ultras just don't feel very good. Uh, the, the GTRs feel really nice and you won't have to worry about bending shock shafts. Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it for the two wheel drive. So this one is one where I, you know, I bought it just cause I wanted to have a two wheel drive truck. I wanted it to kind of be my race truck. So I don't really drive this in like heavy rain or mud. I'm trying to keep it a bit nicer than the four by four. Uh, but I ended up really loving how this thing drives. Uh, it's a ton of fun on baseball diamonds, uh, a ton of fun on just like other short courses. Uh, it's kind of like, it almost feels like a like spec Miata racing in a way where it doesn't deliver the power like the four by four, it feels slower. It, you really have to make the car work. Um, but that, that kind of challenge is fun. So we love, you know, you see in our videos, we'll do like two wheel drive uh, race series. I just feel like it's a little bit more sporting of a platform. It just sucks that you really need to do a lot to it just to kind of get it up to modern standards. Uh, but once you get there, uh, it's definitely a, a fun vehicle. Um, I feel like at this point, I, I might even drive this more than the four by four, but again, it's like weather permitting, right? So if it's muddy out, I'll, I'll default to the four by four, but I have been really enjoying driving this. Yeah, I think that that covers the, the two wheel drive. So uh, that was probably very long and rambly. Uh, I am a certified yapper. So I hope that was interesting or at least you could follow along with what I was saying. Um, overall, you know, I love these two trucks. Uh, I, I started to want to branch out into other things like the UDR, the LMT, the crawlers, all that, but at the end of the day, you just always come back to the slashes. You know, they're, they're just so fun to drive. They're just, they're simple, they're lightweight, they're easy to throw in your trunk, um, just versatile over so many different terrains. You can race them. Um, they're just, they're, they're really great. I know they get a lot of hate, but if you're someone who's, you know, interested in getting to the hobby, um, really couldn't recommend a better place to start. And, you know, even at the end, it's like, once you, you know, branch out into more modern or more expensive, more powerful vehicles, there's still just something so special about these. And, and maybe that's because you get to make it your own too, uh, with the way you can modify them and do whatever you want. You know, you can make your, your own ultimate or, you know, turn it into a backslash or just focus on, you know, durability or scale and all those things. So really is just an awesome platform and um we all love driving them so if you guys have you know any questions or maybe there's something i didn't cover here that you're curious about just let me know and um i'll see you in the next video i think we'll probably cover the crawlers next i, I kind of want to go in order of the that i purchased them so yeah next video uh, will be the crawlers